last hymn. And this morning, she's here to present, encourage, and inspire you with a message of truth, a message for change. And the she I speak of is our Reverend Sonia Davidson, who I'm delighted to share the podium with this morning. Reverend Sonia, it's your time. Thank you, Carol. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And I will just add my own words of welcome to you, those in the sanctuary, and as usual, those on the World Wide Web. I am here this morning standing before you because I believe in change and I have been supported in that change. You may guess or I may tell you later on if I'm so inclined to, but I am here standing before you when I may, may not have done so had I continued with my way of thinking yesterday morning. So, change is the nature of life. Yes, it is. Take it or leave it. No, you can't leave it. Take it because you can't leave it. Everything is changing all the time. The universe is expanding. Stars are exploding. Their particles are forming new compounds and molecules and atoms, and new planets are being formed as we speak. Everything changes. Yes, everything changes except the one. Our Declaration of principle, Principles, yes, states, I believe in God, living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute and self-existent cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation, but it is not absorbed by its creation. And I add from our Bible, I am the Lord thy God, I change us not. So despite all the changes we may witness on the outer, that which is the one, the creator of all, is expressing through it. But I am the Lord thy God, I change us not. How comforting is it to know that that which creates, transforms, builds this very body, that I thought was about to desert me yesterday morning, is able to come forth into expression and renew it. Through affirmative prayer, my own, through the prayers of Reverend Anne, who I called upon, who have finally answered her telephone after several frantic calls to tell her, you better take the platform tomorrow morning, right? And then when I couldn't get her, I asked my Abigail, do a prayer, right? Come on, do a prayer. She said, I can't pray. I said, if you can talk, you can pray. So come on, say something. Just say what you want for grandma. And believe you me, she did such an affirmative prayer to congratulate the Sunday school teacher, Reverend Anne. She said, um, God, even though grandma's body may not be behaving as it should or something like that. She says, the spirit in her, even though it looks sick and behaves sick, the spirit in her is strong and is good and is wonderful, right? I'm paraphrasing, but that is it. And she affirmed with such confidence. And believe you me, it things shifted. It shifted in me. So everything changes, yes. Also from the Declaration of Principles, I would like to, just one more thing I'd like to take from it, and I'd encourage everybody it's in the front of our um, brochure, take it home and read it. Read it one paragraph at a time each week. It really, really 
is the essence of what we believe, and it comes in very handy at times when we may doubt ourselves. I believe in the direct revelation of truth through the intuitive and spiritual nature of the individual, and that any person may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling God. Abigail became a revealer of truth for me yesterday when I needed that. So did Reverend Anne. And it made me stand on principle and remember, right? I must always remember that I am that which changes not. So, we've been talking about the universe and how it's constantly changing. What about this blue planet Earth, this gorgeous planet? Just a speck among all these stars and all these bodies, celestial bodies. Do you know that the first landmass, the first landmass was just one single landmass, and it was called Pangaea. And it lived at just as recently as 230 million years ago, just this one. And slowly, over 165 million years, it started to break apart to form the continents that we know today. These planets that are peopled with all these animals that we know, can you imagine what it would have been like to live with dinosaurs? You can't imagine because we would not have been able to live with dinosaurs. So the dinosaurs went, and we and all that we know as animals are here now. Change takes place. And I understand that Africa, the continent of Africa, is now breaking apart again. You can prove it. There's actually, it can be seen by satellites that it is now breaking apart to form a new continent. Change takes place even in the geography and geology. Now, the very ground that we are standing on now, which we call Jamaica, that is subject to change. It was once, as recently as 70 million years ago, submerged, formed from volcanoes, which cooled, showed up, went down, and came up again. Change happens. Ice caps are melting. Islands are disappearing. And while that is happening, others are emerging. Change happens. Guess what? We adapt or disappear. All these changes are part of creation. But on an individual level, there is little we can do about those cosmic changes, but we can accept them and interpret them in ways that benefit our own lives as we look at change on a personal level. No one expects to have the same appearance at 30 that we had when we were three years old. This little baby, Ari, is going to change to the delight of her parents. Every day as she changes, it's going to bring a thrill to them as they watch her and they encourage her. She's going to change physically, but that spirit within her is going to take the form of her beautiful personality and thrill them. As Reverend John intimated, she already is beginning to show up that, that personality. I am the Lord thy God, I change us not. The beauty of her nature will take form as her parents encourage her and affirm her. Taking every moment of her life as precious, truly precious, taking the opportunity to affirm her 
to bless her, to let her know how beautiful and wonderful it is. What a gift God has given to show up as her and to bless their lives. That's one of the things that I have learned, maybe not as I should have as a parent, but even more so as a grandparent to affirm the gift of God that has appeared as my grandparent. And in so doing, I've begun to do the same thing even more as my children. No, change, though necessary, very often is feared. Why is it feared? We're not sure. It varies from person to person. There's a poll that was done that placed fear of change at the very top of 10 out of 10. Fear of change was at the very top, right? Uncertainty was somewhere in the, t in the top 10. Fear. When one feels that one has no power over one's life, one is more likely to be afraid of change. When one focuses on what one does not want to let go of, one is more likely to be afraid of change. When one wants to change what one has, but may think that it's better to hold on to what I have because I don't know what I'm going towards, if it will be any better. I'm sure you have heard that statement before. For me, I didn't have much control over the change that became a turning point in my life. At 10 a.m. on October 31st, 1964, while sitting in my brother's kitchen in Montreal, Canada, I heard the phone ring. My brother answered, the call was from Jamaica. I heard my brother responding. He said, she met in an accident? Okay. Taken to the hospital? Okay. I will call Dr. Jacobs. He sat down in stunned silence as if unable to move. I jumped up. I will call him myself, I said, since he seemed incapable of moving. I will ring the hospital. So I rang. May I speak to Dr. Jacobs? This is Edith Lammy's daughter speaking. Sorry, he's in the morgue. Bang, I hung up the phone. That was the day my entire lifestyle changed forever. My father had died six weeks before, and now my mother had driven her car into a post. No, I'm not telling you this story. Just give you the impression that that is where my mind has stayed for all these years. I rarely ever remember the date that my parents died on. I never record it on Facebook as so many people do. And despite the fact that this is a turning point in my life, which was very, very sad, very shocking, and may have taken me many, many, many months, perhaps years, to adapt to the idea of it. But out of that change and re recollection, I was able to know that my parents were indeed preparing me for life, which I was able to live independently after they had passed on. I recognize the, how important it is that every single moment of your life should be spent being fully present and being just grateful. Reverend John spoke about gratitude last week. And I think this is something that we should savor in every moment of our lives because every moment is precious. And I think that is what it brought to me more than anything else, to live every moment as if it is wonderfully precious. 
I was able to go because I was so fully prepared. I was able to take decisions that could only have been taken because I was well-schooled in how to manage my life. I went off to university for seven years on my own and tried to live as independently as I could. And on the other side of it, kept giving thanks for parents who made sure that they were preparing me as they did my brothers for life. Change is inevitable, and change is good. It is good. Not all change is welcome, but change is good. Even the changes that come when forests burn, I understand there is something special about it. The change that comes when we're rocked, the earth is rocked. With earthquakes, it's letting off steam. And I could go on and on, but I won't. Change is good. The most important thing that I learned then, and I continue to learn now, as I said, is to live fully and enjoyably, and to dispense no, from any practice of regrets whenever change comes to me. I learned to accept the changes that I did not impose upon myself. I avoid ruminating about the past or the unpleasant, and it is a rare occasion that I will, as I said, post anything like an old picture on the internet. So I say adapt or die. Yes. From In Tune with the Infinite by Ralph Waldo Trine, which is a book that we are studying on Thursdays, there are some words which are of encouragement. It says, each morning is a fresh beginning. We are, as it were, just beginning life. We have it entirely in our own hands. And when the morning with its fresh beginning comes, all yesterdays should be yesterdays, with which we have nothing to do. And he continues, yes. He continues. But I'll just go on to what um, Dr. Ernest Holmes said in Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. He says, what is good today? Being the best we understand will become better tomorrow as our understanding evolves. So if we find ourselves fearing change, being depressed by changes that are, that are imposed upon us, we think. We need to just know for ourselves that that which we are thinking now, yes, it is how we understand life. But our understanding of life, if we just remember that there is a power and presence which is forever just shining through us, prompting us to remember that I am the Lord thy God, I change this not, that is, which is be able to do all things because it is all things. Then day by day, we we'll become more established in that. So whatever change comes to us, we will know that each and every day, we will get better in our acceptance of that which knows that change is okay, it's part of life. No fear of change. You know, fear of change, as you have heard, is one of the big fears. And it can keep us stuck. I suspect, I suspect that we uh, may have felt stuck from time to time. Some may even feel trapped in some situation or other. We are stuck between wanting to change and fearing the change, as I said before. Perhaps we already know exactly what that certain thing is that we want to change. There are people who want to change their job to something better. They want to change from a relationship that they don't find fulfilling, but the change is always within us. When we change how we view life, how we change what we expect from life, what we intend from life, the change happens. It will place us in a position of the change that we want. 
perhaps we're not sure, but we must begin to get clarity and be sure what it is we want to feel when we want that change which we say we want. No reluctance to change. Ah, uh, change can be painful, yes. Let us address the elephant in the room. Soon, our beloved Reverend John Scott will be going on to something which makes him even more joyful. He was very joyful with us, you know, but he's going to be even more joyful in the change that he's going to. And if you notice as the days go by, how his step gets lighter and his smile gets brighter, <laughs> right? And as his smile gets brighter, there are some among us whose face gets, right? Yes. The change may be painful, but the change is necessary. I'm going to tell you a little story, and I have to read it because, yes, I'm going to read it. There's a story of an eagle that has the longest lifespan of the species. It can live up to 70 years. But to reach this age, the eagle must make a very difficult decision. In its 40th year, the eagle's long and flexible talons hmm, can no longer grab a prey which serves as its food. Its long and sharp beak becomes bent. So to survive and to thrive, he may have to make a choice. Its old aged and heavy wings begin, the feathers begin to stick to him, to his chest, so it makes it difficult to fly. Then the eagle is left with only two options, die or go through a painful process of change. The process lasts for 150 year, 50 days, about five months. The process requires the eagle to fly to the mountain top and sit on its nest. I have no way of verifying the story, now, but I'm giving it to you as it's told. There the eagle knocks its beak against a rock until it plucks it out. Then the eagle will wait for the new beak to grow back, after which it will pluck out the talons. When it, its talons grow back, the eagle starts plucking its old age feathers. And after this, the eagle takes the famous flight of rebirth and lives for 30 more years. Change your thinking, change your life painful as it is for us to consider a new change, a change that takes us into what we call the unknown because we still haven't identified a replacement for Reverend John. We know from our teaching that when we change our thinking, everything changes. So we are asking everybody to look for the good news with strong desire for something which is wonderful, lasting. Set our intention, set our resolve, set our expectation, set the certainty, trust, and believe that what comes in the process of change is beautiful and then we'll avoid the pain of it. In time, we can learn to bring only happiness, peace, and perfection into our individual lives and also into the life of our beloved community of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. Practice being conscious of the divine presence in and around each of us individually, in and around this temple, which is the Temple of Light, which was projected out of the mind of God for the purpose for which it has served. Then speak your word of intention from that awareness as if it were the present experience. Yes, learn the lessons from the eagle, avoid the pain, and know that we are the cause of all the experiences that we will have. We on an individual level, and we as the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. Develop an eagerness for new ideas and new experiences, Believe that nothing lies beyond the scope of our ability. Develop a vivid and clear picture of what 
we are doing and when, when we are most happy. Happy in the church. Decide if you want to include these experiences in your life individually and for our church. Know that you are working with an infallible law, the law of causation which says it is done unto you as you believe, that knows how to translate your intentions into specific experiences and begin creating scenarios for just replicating the emotions that we want. Let us let go and move on up Letting go of the old to embrace the new is a divine necessity to growth and fulfillment. A preoccupation with memories or emotions generated in the past will hinder us from being fully present in our current good. Living in the shadow of past glory or past trauma in regret or longing is to be trapped in inertia. We can never fully enjoy today while dwelling too much on past successes. Good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good be better and your better best. Those of us who went to elementary school, that's what it was called then, know it. Good, better, best. Never let it best till your good be better and your better best. Okay. People never ex succeed while resting comfortably on their laurels. Ah, as an Avern Ball once said, the past should be a springboard, not a hammock. Be still and know that I am, which is God. In the stillness, we can distinguish divine guidance clearly and distinctly. The, that peace is a result of trust Trust in the goodness of God and the availability of good to each of us alike and consistently and inevitably of the action of the law of God, the law of causation. But as we believe, so is it in our lives. And uh, beautiful Joel Goldsmith said, you must learn to awaken in the morning with a conscious realization of the presence of God. He continues, I love this. When I awaken in the morning, I am in the habit of establishing the conscious realization of the presence of God. I consider the most important part of my daily work because when I have done that, I have not much to do for the rest of the day except look over my shoulder and watch God do the work. Wow, isn't that faith? Ah, and as we say, Letting go of the old to embrace the new is a divine necessity to growth and fulfillment. Yes, living in the shadow of past glory or regret is to be trapped in inertia. The presence revealing word, a unity publication, encourages us. The presence of light, peace, love, joy, life, and substance is ever within, about, before, and beside man, no matter what. And Isaiah reminds us, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I ask you, I give to you this affirmation from Catherine Ponder, a lady who always gives these simple and direct affirmations, which I love. I love the best in all people and now draw the highest and the best to me. So when we think of it, think of our beloved Reverend John. Think of the person who will come, nobody will replace him, who will come after he has gone. I refuse to say replace him, he's irreplaceable. Right? That's the right word. Yes, clap him, clap him. Yeah. But I want you to say, and I know he wants you to say too. I love the best in all people. I love the best in all people. And now draw the highest and the best to me. And now draw the highest and the best to me. And so it is.
but God is in the midst of it. And <clears throat> Reverend Sonia recalled that primary school ditty, and I will quote for you one that I learned later in school when we were in more serious times. The old order changeth, yielding place to new, and God fulfills himself in many ways, lest one good custom should corrupt the world. And so we know, you know change happens, but in the middle of change, there's creativity, there is growth, there is whole, a whole world of newness and goodness being opened to us. <laughs> 